Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, let's just talk about the simplified side of growth. So if you're in window cleaning, looking to get into window cleaning, your heck, just have some time to waste. Stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy things. Hopefully it's an awesome podcast, or at least decent, and you want to watch a bunch of them. There's five years of podcasts, so go back and check it out. Uh, tons of content, each one half hour, and anywhere podcasts are available and on YouTube. Uh, if you're one of the OGs, the original gangsters, uh, what's up? Uh, I appreciate you guys always watching. Some of you have been with me from the beginning. And uh, shameless plug coming, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. So if you've watched every episode, you've listened, and then of course you order your supplies through me, well, it's because of you that I get to wear really fancy free sweatshirts. Huh? No, I really, really do appreciate it. You guys know the drill, but I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. When you put an order in through me, it's super simple on your side, costs you nothing extra. I get credit. It's like an awesome virtual high five, and I get to be a rep, which is my ultimate goal. If you want me to put your order in, which I know you do, all orders, big or small, shoot me a text at 862-312-2026. Let me know everything's in your cart, and I will go ahead and just like pull the trigger on it. It's super simple and super awesome. Anyway, thanks for that. Shameless plug number two, if you haven't yet, did you know that there's a magazine for window cleaners called American Window Cleaner Magazine? Of course. It is the world's best magazine voted on by myself. Uh, It's been going on since 1986. It is absolutely awesome. Uh, Pictures and articles and everything all based on window cleaning and everything window cleaning related. And of course, you get the super amazing sticker sheet in every issue and it's shipped to your door it's a real print magazine it is absolutely awesome to read while you're on the toilet <laughs> can't i can't plug it any better than that uh but anyway go to awcmag.com get your subscription be absolutely amazing and epic anywho today we are talking all about the growth of window cleaning it's just window cleaning growth simplified and a ton of you a ton. The number one thing that I get people asking is like how to grow, right? How to find customers, how to get busier, how to, how to, how to, how to, right? And that's what I figured I'd talk about. Now, we've talked about growth and we've always talked about certain pieces of growth and how to grow and how to sell if you're selling or how to do the work if you're working, right? But there's a very, very, very simple set of rules in growth for window cleaning. If you really want to grow, understand that a growth season is going to be work. It's going to be work. It's going to cost you some money and you have to stick with it. Growth does not come easy. Now, once there's momentum, growth will be a little bit easier. But up until that point, it's on you to make it happen. It's super simple. We're going to talk about the simplified side of it, but understand that it's work. If you're listening to this right now and you want to grow, now I know it's fall, going into fall, but these five things, you could turn your company around. You could double it within the next year. Easy. Well, for most of you, right? It's super simple and you just have to break it down and understand what makes a company grow, especially in window cleaning. And if you come on and you want to give me an email telling me about how wrong I am, you sure can. But the key to growth is not cleaning a good window, is not doing great work. It's not, um, you know, making sure that you do screens on every house instead of not doing, that's not the key to extra work. That's not the key to growth. Remember, growth is just a side of the business. Having a business, keeping people happy, making sure that you don't get complaints and that type of things, it's absolutely epic. But it is not the key to growth. Growth does not come because you cleaned a window 110% versus 100%. You care. No one cares. No one cares. Think about this. In window cleaning, 
the quality of window cleaning is dictated by callbacks. If you're getting zero callbacks, it's good. People are like freaking out right now. I always get those people and uh, some of you are genuine and some of you are trolls, I know. But it's just people that go, no, if you do good work, your company will grow. Well, yeah, organically and super slow. I'm talking about growth. I'm talking about super steroid imbues growth. That doesn't happen because you cleaned a good window. That just means that when you were done, people's expectations were met. It all comes down to experience and you guys have known that I beat that like a dead horse. But of the five rules, the first and most important rule to growth is repeat work. It's repeat work. You have customers now. Even if you've been in business for a year, you have X amount of customers. If you've been in business for 10 years, you have X amount of customers. If you could increase the people you already have and make sure that they are repeating their work, you will grow they will be happier. Every single time you've ever cleaned somebody's window, without fail, well, I mean, unless you piss somebody off, but without fail, they're super stoked. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh, they're, they're happy. You've created happy. Let's, let's, <clears throat> let's go on the um, extreme side. But if you had every customer you had, what if they did their windows every month? It's the extreme side, it's not gonna happen no matter how awesome you are. Every customer will not do that. But what if that happened? How many trucks would you need on the road? How many dollars would you make in a year? How many millions of dollars would you do? How much support staff and office size and equip? Think of your company then. Now, obviously that's the exorbitant side, but think about that same company where you never not, you don't have one person repeat. What's that look like? Oh God, that would be a struggle. Every customer has to be acquired. No one repeats. You have to find new people for every single person. It's like roofing companies. It's really hard to be a roofing company because you have to find every customer because you're not waiting 30 years. They maybe come back, maybe, but a lot happens in 30 years. They're surely not going to remember you. Every customer is new. Now, obviously, you are not going to have either of those. You're not going to have no one repeat, and you're not going to have people repeat every month. But if you can increase the amount of time people have it done or uh, amount of cleanings, you're making them happy twice as often. You're going to make twice as much money. You're going to stay twice as relevant. You're gonna be on the top of their mind anytime they need anything from you. There's so many benefits to that. Even if you had a, every one of your customers did it twice a year, as opposed to once a year, some every two years, some every five years, some just one time, your company would be huge. That means that every customer you land means you have a job every six months forever, hypothetically. The key is repeat work. I've talked to people before that go, yeah, I just don't bother customers. I don't like to I don't like to bug them. If they hire me, they hire me. That is absolute garbage. If that's you, I'm sorry. This was years ago, so I don't even remember who told me, so it's not anybody in particular. But it's mind-blowing to me that that's how some people operate. You don't believe in what you do. We're a luxury service. What you do makes people happy. Like if you don't trust in yourself, you're going to say, well, I don't want to be so expensive. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. The problem is, is if you don't believe in yourself, then no one believes in yourself. Confidence is key. But repeat work. Do the dentist close. We've talked about that a billion times. But start implementing that yesterday. Right? Dentist clothes. You go to the dentist, what happens? You get your teeth cleaned, you walk out of the dentist, and by the time you're done, they hand you a bag with your next appointment six months later. They don't ever ask. They don't ever say, well, don't worry about it. You just call us when you want your teeth cleaned again. They don't. They schedule the appointment and dentists get people in every six months. That's how you fill up a dentist. If it was up to the people, they would never come back. Or at least it would be years. 
before they decide they have to go to the dentist again. And then what happens, their teeth are so bad, it takes a lot more work. That's Windows. If somebody only calls you when they feel like it, now you're cleaning three years of dirt instead of only six months for the same price. Frequency is key. Repeat work is key. Do the dentist close. Another key, if you will, without saying that word again, to window cleaning growth, just simplified, is don't leave money on the table. You cannot leave money on the table. A jack of all trades is a master of none. I've heard it, you've heard it, right? But there's a wheelhouse. There's things that you do or could do that is in your exact wheelhouse that if somebody's hiring you for one of them, they will hire you for more than one of them. Pressure washing, window cleaning, both of those tied together. If you do pressure washing and you're doing a house wash, 99.99% of the time, they also are somebody who would be interested in window cleaning. They're not doing their own window cleaning if they're not pressure washing. Or if they're cleaning the windows, they're not then pressure washing, vice versa. So, we see how much money's on the table. We go, okay, the, this homeowner, it has $2,000 they're gonna spend this year on just services for their house, right? That includes, you know, maybe lawn care and dog poop and they gotta paint and they gotta, you know, do gutter cleaning and house washing and window cleaning. They got all these things, right? Now, there is no cut and dry where the money is, but hypothetically, they have money on the table. Now, who gets that money is up to you. Obviously, I don't think that any window cleaner should be a painter. I don't think that any window cleaner should also mow lawns. I don't. If that's your business model, awesome. Uh, you can't be wrong as your company, but I don't think that that's great. That's too far out of your wheel well. I will allow someone else to get the money for painting. But guess what I do do? I window clean, I pressure wash, I gutter clean, roof cleaning, concrete, pavers. We do inside garage cleaning on the floor with reclamation. There's a lot of things that I do that they are going to need. And I'm going to take up all of those things myself. And I'm going to let them know all of the things I do. And I'm going to attempt to upsell on those things. It's great that you do them, but if people don't know that you do them, or if you're not able to convey your value of why they should have them done, that's on you. Don't leave money on the table. People are willing to spend it regardless if it goes to you or not. I never, never, never understand the idea behind it. And if you're, if you're in, by the way, if you're on YouTube, comment. By the way, on a separate note, just because I'm diving off this, my personal YouTube channel, uh, Jersey WCR Nation is now back up. Super, super awesome blog videos on there. So go and check that out uh, and subscribe because that's what people do. But I digress. But if you're on YouTube, comment. But there's a problem that I have with people who are like, oh, well, no, they're already getting window cleaning. I don't want to, I don't want to do it. They're going to do it. The nice thing with what we do is you say, hey, these are the awesome things I do and I'd love to do them for you. And if it's not in, you know, Jane Doe's fixed income budget, then she goes, oh, that's awesome, but no thank you. Right? If somebody says yes to a transaction, it's because they want the transaction. They're happy with the price. They're happy with the service. You fix a pain point, done deal. To not push the other services and let them know that why they are as awesome as they are. You're leaving money on the table because your brain is stopping you. If I go to somebody's house and they want to pay me $10,000 because they're doing all these services, super awesome. Guess what? $10,000 is going to take away a lot of the headaches of the things they need to get done. They may be getting a ton of stuff done. Window restoration, you know, shower door. They may be doing a ton of stuff. If they got it in their budget and they want to do it, awesome. I can make them $10,000 happy. It's not my decision on what is too much money for somebody to spend. That's up to them. 
But in that same case, if I got somebody who's only got $300, that's all they got budgeted for the whole year, but they want something to make them happy. They got something that they want to make their, their mother who lives with them happy or their, their wife or themselves when they're in there doing dishes. and they want, If they want to do that, awesome. The price is dictated by them, but I will 100 million percent always tell people what I do. And I'll always tell them why I'm the best at doing what I'm doing. And I'm going to let them know because guess what? I can make them happy in a bunch of different ways. Don't leave money on the table. Another one that people really don't focus on like they should is getting found. We've talked about if you have somebody already, right? What we haven't talked about is finding those people. But more importantly, them finding you. Now, there's two ways of advertising, active and passive. Active means you're finding them. Passive means they're finding you. You need to have both of them and they both work different ways. Passive can reach a lot more people, but the message has to be on point. You have to be found though. I've talked a billion times about Monk, uh, Monk SEO, just a Monk, SEO in general. Ryan Johnson does Facebook ads with them. Uh, nice job. I've talked about them. By the way, there's a link to nice job. Uh, if you're on YouTube, there's a nice job link. And uh, uh, I don't tag Monk in there, but search Monk SEO. Those guys, what they do for your company is absolutely amazing. I will 1 million percent always recommend uh, SEO work in Monk especially because he's done amazing stuff for me. But I will always, always, always recommend SEO work. So people will say, well, what should I do? I got this amount of money I want to put to budget. Should I do like, you know, an ad or EDDM or what should I do to really get a big, big bang for my money? SEO. Yeah, but you know, like, well, should I do like wrap my, my car? Yes, but if you only got one money, then you get SEO. Why? Well, SEO is the way that anybody and everybody finds anything ever. If somebody's looking for window cleaning, they're not driving around waiting to see your car. If they are looking for window cleaning, they're not sitting eagerly by their mailbox waiting for a mailer. If somebody is going to be looking for you, meaning they're hot to get the service, they're going to do what? The same thing you do anytime you need something. Go online. Type it in. That's what I need. Window cleaning in my area. If you pop up, you get the job. If you pop up, they look at your stuff, it makes them feel like they could end their pain point of having to schedule this and having dirty windows and whatever with you, it's done. It's done. Right? If they can't find you, they're not going to keep looking for you. They're going to find whoever they find and go with them. If you're not out there, if you're not found and you're not first, if you don't put the, the, the passion you have, the value you have, if you're not found, they find somebody else. No one at all ever passes up other people to find you. Unless they're specifically looking for you, and at that point, you should have left them with a bunch of stuff anyway. But if they're looking for a new company, they are not going to spend all day looking for companies. They're going to call the first place that pops up. If they don't answer the phone, they're going to call the second. If they call or they answer, they're going to hire them. That's it. No one cares about window cleaning like us. No one cares to go in in detail and they don't want to be in. It's not their life like it is ours. They want it to be off their plate. They want it to be done and they want the service to get handled. You have to get found. SEO, by the way, if you don't know, search engine optimization, that is how people find you. You know when you type in, say you type in window cleaning San Antonio. If you type that in for the first time ever, right, so you're not recording cookies or you're in incognito mode, by the way, use incognito mode, uh, that helps you, it doesn't understand what you've searched before, so you get organic results. And you type it in, 
Look at the top spots. A, there's going to be a whole bunch of ads. But look at even the organic ones. The organic one, the organic two, maybe the organic three. But for sure the organic one is the biggest, most busiest company in new work in your area. Now, they may not be the biggest because they haven't been around forever and they're really good at their retention rate or whatever. But as far as new work comes in from people searching, it will always be number one. That person will always get most of the work. Because you are not ever going to call all 10 of the organics on page one and then also go to page two. You're just not. You have to get ranked and you have to get found. That's where having reviews, because that pops up on local, is huge. You have more reviews than everybody. You will be found over anybody. Your SEO is on point. It helps people find you. It makes people find you. It makes you be the first person. Now, everybody who, 90% of the people who are searching online, which is how everybody searches online. Everybody just searches for companies. That's how they do it. That is the world we live in. 95% of those are calling the first guy because they're just going to go down the line. What if you're the first guy? This is growth. You have to spend money on SEO to make it happen. though, And you have to choose the right company because there are some garbage companies out there. So definitely, definitely do your research. But you got to get found. Now say you got those ads. You put the ads out there. They're great. You love them. You need to be split testing ads. You need to split test ads. You cannot put something together, and I get this probably two to three times a week when some people will send me things to look at. Hey, man, check this out. This is my new mailer. Do you want me to tell you how good it is, or do you want me to tell you really what I think? Because most of them are very, very generic. They do not trigger any type of buying response. They do not trigger any type of emotion but you're really proud of them because you made it and that's awesome, but you're not your target market. Having a proper ad done and split testing, right? You know within a day or two if an ad's working. You need to then change things and see if that works better. If that works better, change something else. Does that work better or worse? Change it back if if it's worse. If it's better, keep it. Keep changing until you split test and you have the most efficient ad. Or get a template. We have them. Not to plug something else. But uh, yeah, go to windowcleaner.com, search templates. We got a bunch of them that have already been split tested. It is so easy to get a template than trying to create your own. And listen, design is fun. It is really, really fun. But fun does not constitute growth. It doesn't constitute having. If you go and you take an ad, you design an ad, and you throw it out there, and it doesn't do anything for you, it didn't help you any. You're not growing. It could have been fun all you want, but it's not working. And it's really, really hard for somebody, A, like me, or like anybody to tell you, mm, this isn't great. Ask your spouse. Ask your relatives. Ask a neighbor. Ask a anything. And say, I don't want to know anything about the good parts. Tell me the parts you do not like in this ad. I do not want yes men. If you guys talk to me, which I hope you do. I hope I'm your rep, but I hope you just ask questions about anything. 862-312-2026. But I hope that I'm your rep. I hope I'm your guy. But if you ever ask me a question, very, very rarely... Will I ever tell you the things I like? Very rarely. It has to really, really trigger for me to tell you that. Because it doesn't help you. Nothing helps if I ask somebody and they go, yeah, yeah, oh man, no, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, 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 oh, it's great. Unless you absolutely think that, it doesn't help me. And even if you do think that, I'm guaranteeing there's something you think you might want to change. I want to know what to change. I want to know the things you don't like. Go to Amazon, go to buy something, look at the negative reviews, not the positive reviews. I don't need to go see something, great, everything is awesome. That doesn't help me. I want to see a bad review that says, the directions were too hard. 
The, the box was hard to open. I know those negative reviews are garbage. I know the product's good. Right? So there's a lot of things that can kind of go from that. So do it. Check it. Make sure to be uh, split test. And when you find your gold, spend it. The big one that is the hardest on this list is to have memorable staff. You have to have a staff around you if you have employees that are amazing. People need to build a relationship with them in order to love you. They have to. Because if somebody has a relationship with a person, they will use that person. If they have a relationship with a company, they'll leave the company for somebody else. That's just the, the simple nature of it. If you have memorable staff, people will always use you because they love that staff member. Have your staff understand it's a people game. We are creating an experience. They need to understand if that homeowner wants to talk, if that homeowner doesn't want to talk. That's the experience that we're providing. Always, always hire for the personality, teach the role. You can absolutely teach anybody anything, what we do. As far as techniques, you can teach them all that. <clears throat> what you can't teach is for somebody to have a personality. You just can't. It's one thing you can't teach. So, hire on personality, teach the role. 100% it will help your company. Have people in place that represent your company the way you want to be represented. And this goes back to all those people who go, oh, I do great work. Probably, but people don't care. People just don't want to complain. 90% versus 110% and anything in between is the same. I will stand on the mountain for that one. People do not care. Clean is universal. If you see a streak or a smudge or a smear, then it's not clean. It's not less clean. It's not clean. Clean is either it is or is not. It is a very hard line. Because if somebody sees anything, it's not clean. But if somebody doesn't see anything, it's clean. So why are we focused on that side of it? Have a memorable staff that creates an amazing experience that way you get those people to repeat, right? You get them to do upsells. You get all that goodness, you put it out there and people are finding your website. They're finding why you're awesome. Now they're hiring you. Maybe they're finding you off that ad that you split test. You split test for years in order to have the most perfect ad. You have to split test. You have to do that. These are all the things that just make growth happen. Simplify growth and it will happen super, super good. So, anywho, uh, that's everything. Listen, I really, really genuinely want to be your rep. Uh, my number is 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. Genuinely want to be your rep for everything window cleaning. Please call me, text me, every order. Every time, I would absolutely appreciate that. I would also love it if you got a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine. I want the whole world to have a subscription because I think this is an amazing magazine. I think it's absolutely awesome. It comes with amazing stickers, amazing posters and knowledge and things. And it's like 69 bucks. That's like an hour's worth of your work for an entire year of the magazine. Not only does it support the industry, it helps me out and it helps you out more importantly. So go to awcmag.com, get the magazine. By the way, I never have links. I actually do. Response a bit is one. I always have their link and I always now have nice job. Finally, I got a link with nice job because I've been talking about them for so stinking long, but that's all in the description too. Go check it out, click it. If you do want to use it, use the links. Obviously that comes back to, it tags me and it's just another way that uh, you can help me out. But they're really, really genuinely good programs to do your research. But all that being said, 
growth in window cleaning can be absolutely simple if you keep an eye on it and yeah. hopefully your company grows but more importantly hopefully by next week you are epic